Hello, my name is Tom Pettifor. I'm the crime editor at the Daily Mirror. And today I will be discussing with former Met detective Peter Kirkham the alleged confession uh, by the murderer of Millie Dowler, Levi Belfield, uh, his alleged confession to the double murders of Lynn and Megan Russell in 1996 in Chillingdon. Now, uh, Belfield is serving a whole life term, which means he'll never be released from prison for the murders of Millie, who was killed in 2002 in Walton-on-Thames, uh, and also the murders of Marsha MacDonald and Amélie Delagrange. Um, recently, it's been reported that he has now confessed to killing, as I said, Megan and Lynn um, in Chillingdon in 1996. But this murder um, has already been solved, Kent police say, and a man is serving 25-year minimum sentence for their murders. His name's Michael Stone. He has always said that he's innocent. He still denies the murders to this day. And um, we now have apparently a four-page detailed confession by Belfield outlining what he did on the day he allegedly killed uh, the mother and daughter. So um, it'd be interesting to talk to Peter about what he thinks about this confession, whether he believes that Belfield's telling the truth, uh, whether Belfield may have other motives for giving this statement. So first of all, Peter, hello, how are you doing? Hi, uh, I'm fine, thank you. So, um, can you tell us a little bit about what you would be doing as a detective if you were handed this four page statement by Belfield? Yeah, sure. These things are really quite difficult because we've got a situation where basically we've got two people um, who are in the frame for the same crime and there's there's no suggestion that, uh, that they could have worked together or anything like that. So both can't be right, if you see what I mean. They can't both have done it. And so um, I'd be starting by having a very, very close look at the content of the statement that's now been provided. I'd be keen to find uh, all the factual elements of that statement uh, and compare them to what is in the public domain. Now, the murder of the Mus of the Russells um, has had an immense amount of publicity uh, over um, nearly 25 years now. Um, and as there have been, in fact, two trials at which Stone has been convicted, um, pretty much everything has been uh, put in front of the court in a public domain. And so um, I suspect there's very little left that is not out there somewhere. Now, obviously, some facts and some parts of the story have received more uh, coverage than others, but I would be very surprised if there's anything significant that hasn't one way or another made its way into the public domain. And the key thing when you're looking at the content of a statement is looking for things that only the killer could know um, and that aren't out there in the public domain for anybody to pick up. One thing that Belfield has got is lots of time on his hands uh, to carry out research and, and read every word ever written about the Russell murders, if that's what he so wants. Mm -hmm. The second thing I'd be looking at is the credibility of Belfield. Uh, is he believable? Is he somebody with a track record of lying? Is he somebody with a track record of uh, being an honest uh, witness or an honest source of information? Um, I'm afraid he doesn't fare very well on that front uh, in terms of his history. Um, I'd be looking at the strength of the conviction against Michael Stone. Um, obviously, the stronger the conviction, uh, the less likely it is that it's anything's gone wrong and that we're looking for anybody else. Um, so that's a key, uh, a key aspect of it as well. Um, I'd be looking at the credibility of others involved uh, in the case, um, witnesses, key witnesses, alibi witnesses uh, and such like. In this particular case, um, I believe Belfield um, his ex-wife has said that, no, he couldn't possibly have done it uh, because he was with me in West London all day that day. That's um, and that's 100 miles away. Um, 
uh, she's not somebody that might be expected to call, spring to his defence, uh, which is a sort of uh, mark in favour of, of of that not uh, of her being right and him not That's being right. responsible. Yeah, because she was uh, a prosecution witness in the Millie Dowler trial against Belfield, so she yeah. had no reason to defend him. Exactly, um, and and so. Um, the other thing would be, could she have got the date wrong? And in this particular case, I believe it was her birthday, in fact. And so she's got far, far more reason for specifically remembering that day than witnesses usually have. So, mm. again, another sort of point in her favour as being a witness of truth. So I suppose it's important to tell everybody that um, there are no forensic, there's no forensic evidence that links Stone to the murder scene. <clears throat> Excuse me. And at the moment, uh, Stone's lawyers have put an application into the Criminal Cases Review Commission uh, to try to have his convictions quashed. And part of that is asking for forensic tests to be done on various items recovered from the scene, including a boot lace, which the police lost and then found, Kent Police. Um, it's reappeared. But as I understand it, tests on that have been inconclusive. Um, so there, with, without forensic evidence, all we have is witness evidence, um, alibi evidence and statements from the individuals involved. So I don't know, what would you be looking to verify? Uh, would, would there be any way of verifying anything Belfield said? Very limited ways. Um, the murders of the Russells took place on a country lane in Kent, um, outdoors. And those sorts of scenes where there is um, an attack, where you haven't got the attacker and the attacker's clothing, etc., cetera, uh, seized immediately, um, you're going to struggle for forensic evidence anyway. It's not an area covered by CCTV, so I, I, I suspect there's little, if any, CCTV and certainly nothing um, directly on the scene. Um, there are limited... Uh, surfaces from which you might hopefully get fingerprints but the countryside isn't really a good surface for getting fingerprints from uh, when you compare it against polished wood or glass or um, shiny metal uh, that you find in and around houses and other buildings and so uh, there's as an investigator I would go into this investigation the investigation of the murder of the russells not really expecting to find very much defense lawyers have got this thing that if there's no fingerprints there's no dna there's no cctv they can't possibly have done it frankly that's just arrant nonsense um some circumstances lend themselves to there being lots of uh, evidence lying around to be found and, and then it comes down to the competence of the investigation and the crime scene examination and such like uh, but, you know, the evidence is there to be found. Uh, but in other cases, you can have the best detectives in the world on the case, the best scene examiners in the world. There ain't no evidence there to be found. And if it isn't there to be found, it ain't going to be found. Um, and that doesn't mean they're guilty. The absence of forensic evidence is not evidence of them not being guilty. It, it, it's just um, something to consider along with everything else. Certainly. And, and to say a bit more about Belfield's character and um, what we know about his previous claims, it's important that everyone knows that there were claims of about four years ago that he'd made a confession to another prisoner that he killed, um, Megan and Lynn. Um, but he actually said on the record that he had nothing to do with the murders in 2018, I think and that he didn't he, he wasn't guilty of these murders so now he's obviously flip-flopped on that again we also know that in the millie dowler trial he instructed his lawyers to put the dowler family through a horrendous awful experience where they where where, where the defense lawyers implied that millie was unhappy at home that she may have yeah. run away um there was a very um private stuff about her father that was put in the public sure. domain. So he he, he was, you, you could see Belfield um, likes to play with people and perhaps this, this could be part of his motivation for making this statement, do you think, Peter? 
Yeah, Belfield certainly uh, has a track record of, of playing mind games, one of a bad description, with the police. Um, the senior investigating officer, Colin Sutton, who I know well, um, mm. who actually led the investigation that convicted him, um, he has said as much that, that Belfield sort of toys with the police and, and, and teases the police and, and, and plays these games with them. And as you say, that, that's gone so far as to uh, effectively psychologically torturing the witnesses and the families of victims uh, by his games. Um, that suggests that you're going to need to approach anything he says with a significant degree of cynicism. Um, he's, he's not somebody that you'd approach and think, well, there we go. Um, you know, he's he said it, it's bound to be true. Let's just go and prove it. Uh, in fact, quite the contrary, him, his previous behaviours are such that uh, you'd, you'd do the exact opposite. You'd look at it and say, yeah, OK, so this is the latest thing he's come up with. We're going to have to prove it. Someone's going to have to show me why this is true, because my default position is it's the latest load of nonsense from him. So what what do you think? Um, what are your actual personal feelings about this um, statement, the timing of it? Why do you think he would be doing this now? Uh, I've no idea why he would be doing it now. Um, that will be something in his own mind. Um, no doubt there is some rationale for it. But um, I mean, there's really three sort of motivations that might be there. Uh, he might have formed some sort of friendship and some sort of relationship um, with Stone and be trying to do him a favour by undermining his conviction and getting him out, um, bearing in mind that Belfield's probably uh, finally realised that he's going to be behind bars for the rest of his life. Um, so he's not going to make his position any worse by admitting something else, uh, even though it's horrendous and, and a, an awful crime. Um, I'm not aware of there being any relationship, any sort of contact um, between them that might suggest that that, that positive motivation is there. Um, he might be doing it um, just to wind up the police and, and play, play out yet another sort of chapter of this thing that's going on and keep his name up in lights, as it were. Um, I'm not sure what his mental state is, but I'm sure it's not normal. Um, so, you know, being notorious and all the rest of it may well be something that's attractive to him. I, I don't know what the motivation would be, um, I, I, but I don't think we need to know what the motivation is. Um, we need to objectively look at the contents of the statement and see where that takes us. If there's anything new in it, great. If there isn't, I don't think it's going to go very far at all. And on that subject about where it's going to go at the moment as i understand it the statement was taken by stone's um solicitor paul bacon in prison uh and that he is going to submit that to the criminal cases review commission as part of stone's application to have his convictions quashed but uh, kent police have said that they're not going to look at it that they have a man's been convicted of the murders and they obviously feel that Belfield is playing games. Uh, I think Stone's lawyers are asking for the Met Police to have a look at it, this statement. Do you think uh, that that should happen then, Peter? Or do you think they that uh, Belfield's just seeking attention and he should be ignored altogether? I don't think it can be dismissed without someone having a look at it. And I can understand the request to have an independent force look at it. Uh, whether that should be the Met with all the things they've got on their plate at the moment, I don't know. Um, what are West Midlands or Manchester doing? Um, but yeah, someone's going to have to have a look at it um, and what they make of it in their sort of first pass um, will indicate whether there needs to be any more time and effort put into it. Um, like I say, I suspect if there's nothing new, uh, then it will be dismissed fairly fairly uh, robustly and fairly rapidly. Brilliant. Well, thanks very much for your time today, Peter. Really interesting. And no everyone out there can read 
Peter's detailed findings in today's Daily Mirror. Indeed. All right.